Welcome back. This is Why in the Morning. My name is Ram Maguko. It is a pleasure being with you today on this fine Monday morning. If at all you're just joining us, you're just in time for the next conversation of the day, and it's all about matters concerning youth and politics. And of course, we're coming to you live from the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are also streaming live through our website, and that's at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. This is your number one news station, and of course, we value your feedback. The hashtag is Y in the morning. Tag me at Ram Maguko and at Y254 channel. And of course, uh, we uh, will sample uh, your feedback a bit later on during this morning show but uh, in this particular conversation today we want to take a look at uh, stories making headlines and especially uh, take a keen, uh, taking a keen interest into the people daily this monday morning remember it is the 23rd of may 2022 and uh, we shall take a look at uh, politics and stories that have been uh, turning in the past few days and of course what uh, we should be expecting in the next one week a very good morning to you to help us in this particular conversation i am with uh, to my far uh, right uh, joined by caleb ikenye you know uh, uno who is uh, the law and who is a law and a political analyst and uh, next to me i am with uh, meshak otieno who is a political activist and the ceo of awake limited karibisana gentlemen thank you Mko salama Asante sana. And of course, Nashukuru. Let me start uh, with uh, you, Meshak. And uh, today on uh, the conversation that we are having in this fine Monday morning is one that I'm sure many Kenyans will be really interested in. Remember, the August elections are coming up in a few. It is August 9th. And of course, this election will not come by f uh, free of charge. It will cost us a staggering 44.2 billion shillings. That's right. 44.2 uh, a billion Kenya shillings, which is uh, what is going to cost us, and this is according to a report published by the National Treasury, uh, 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 underlining the high cost of uh, democracy in the country. 22 billion shillings uh, has already been disbursed to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission and uh, other government agencies involved in uh, planning on and conducting of the coming election and providing support services such as security. So here we're looking at another 22.1 billion Kenya shillings, which will be financed in the 2022-2023 financial budget financial year, which starts on uh, 1st of July. July uh, this year, about a month and a week uh, to the election. In total, the various de uh, departments involved in the election has uh, had asked for an allocation of 67.1 billion Kenya shillings, but this was reduced to 43.9 billion Kenya shillings. So special attention will be on the ma on maintaining peace security throughout uh, 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 the increase uh, throughout and of course uh, uh, ensuring that we have increased vigilance during this electioneering period so the august election will cost you and i the kenyan taxpayer over 44 billion kenya shillings meshak what do you think about that thank you ram for for the invite this morning mm -hmm. um first of all um before i get into the real issue I want to congratulate um, the Minister for Education, that is uh, Professor Magoha, mm -hmm. for ensuring 100% transition to school and basically being on the field uh, to ensure that, you know, all the pupils, all the candidates who did their KCP yeah. transition, um, ha successfully transition to secondary school. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the reason why I'm bringing that on board is mm -hmm. uh, we need as a country to begin thinking about where we need to put money the most. Mm. Um, if you look at the kind of elections and the money that has been stated that needs to run this election mm. is a lot. Um, remember, Canada is the second largest country after Russia, yet mm. 
their the cost they put in election is half what we are basically uh, you know asking for what IBC is asking for yeah. and then you basically try and ask yourself um are we going to have a peaceful election are we going to have a credible election is this amount really necessary if in the past few years electioneering years we've not had a peaceful a calm and a credible election so you find out that in every electioneering year every citizen has to cough a lot of money from their pocket mm. that which goes into waste so th- for me this is an entire amount that um i think is really not necessary mm. uh we we can do away with a lot of things uh, mm. we can we can do local printing of you know you know you know bal- ballot papers um other than you know doing um doing them from outside uh, we can make sure we localize mechanisms to reduce cost mm-hmm. so ibc has to now think about the common mananchi the struggle right now is economic struggle how do you ensure that you run an election that is credible with less than what you require mm-hmm. because at a country where we are we are past crisis point but but, but i'm looking at uh lessons learned from previous elections do we do we have lessons learned from previous election do we really have those lessons mm-hmm. and, I, and i will bring you back to 2017 for example we know that if there is one electioneering period that we faced a magnitude of challenge or magnitude of challenges is in the 2017 where we actually had a repeat election those elections were nullified by the supreme court that was the first learning point that we needed to have but remember today we are going into an election with the same body that bungled an election in 2017 and actually made us go into a repeat election but yet we are not reflecting so much as to whether we have lessons drawn from the 2017 elections here now they are asking for a hooping 43 billion to ensure that this er- election is successful they are not sharing the learning points they are not sharing with us the strategy they are just mocking around the amount so as kenyans we never have learning points right uh, 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 from uh, uh, every electioneering period but of course i'm looking at some of the things that are being uh, ha- handled during this particular time we're looking at the training of of officials we're looking at the training of uh, of those who are going to handle these uh, particular documents the polling officials uh, so many people are being trained that are going to be handling uh, these elections so you cannot train something uh, uh, someone on, on things uh, based on uh, 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 you know what has not yet happened meaning that as a country there are some lessons you've picked there are some lessons you've learned and that's why we are training people don't you think that meshak I, i i think i think yes it, it's it's really good to look at it uh, i mean i mean at that point or at mm. that angle mm. but what i'm saying is share reflect with us on the past uh, you know crisis that we've had and the reason why you are training um a lot of people mm-hmm. for this election period i mean ibc has not been so much keen on sharing with us the insights drawn from the previous election so they are continuously in this vicious circle of doing things and asking for a lot of money and this is why i'm saying is that we can reduce some of these things mm. they have mechanism to ensure that the kind of amount that they are requesting right now can be reduced and i'm so sure like i've just spoken about printing of ballot papers these are things that we don't need to do outside our country we can do them locally here we can ensure that the police gives us enough security without paying more private security mm. we can ensure that youths volunteer uh, with little amount to make sure that the elections run successfully right. so uh-huh. there are mechanisms that, that that can guarantee us a very peaceful election but also a very affordable election uh, all right let me let, let me come to you uh Caleb uh, your thoughts in regards to this particular uh, issue here and uh, of course i'm looking at security mm-hmm. um do you see that uh, now we have proper funding to ensure that th- we will have proper security during this coming general elections okay thank you so much once more my name is Caleb and i thank you for inviting me for another time mm-hmm. Uh I will say this whether the election cost will be 40 billion whether the election cost will be 100 billion provided we have a credible transparent and a clear process 
it does not matter the cost like you have put it we are having uh, you know a crisis a financial crisis in Kenya but again we cannot give a, a blind eye to the fact that there are officers who need to be trained and as you know as democracy grows and uh, f- for an instance with Kenya Kenya I think it's number two in terms of uh, growth of democracy after South Africa in, in, in Africa, as the democracy grows, the more expensive it becomes. Mm. So we must be ready to embrace. And like my brother here is saying, I would like to correct him, it's not a ABC that, uh, that is demanding for more cash. It's not a ABC that is you know, asking for more funding, mm. but it's the demand in the ground. We need to, you know, we need to, 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 to acquire, you know, the necessary skills from the, t- uh, from the officers being trained on ground on how to deliver a credible election. Mm-hmm. And again, we cannot also give a blind eye that there is always competition and we must embrace competition. And for an instance that we have a, 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 a tie between, uh, you know, the uh, two presidential uh, uh, candidates, in, you know, in the forthcoming general elections, we must also be ready to, you know, to embrace another cost. If it will be another 40 billion, we must also be ready. But mm-hmm. provided the process is transparent mm-hmm. and clear. And of course, y- your thoughts on the issue of security. Uh, the Ministry of uh, Interi- Interior has allocated around uh, 500 billion Kenya shillings to enhance security, especially in uh, areas that are considered to be uh, violent hotspots. Okay, thank you so much. Once more, uh, for this reason, I'll first want to criticize that move and, ag- and at the same time also embrace it. Number one, why I would criticize that move is because of this. For an instance, in an for instance, in an area like uh, Baringo County, mm. uh, the government has made it ha- ha- has tried, you know, uh, taking their uh, security apparatus, taking their security personnel, and we have not gotten a clear, you know, a clear a clear leeway on how issues are there in terms of security. But here they are they are coming and telling us, you know what. We want to beef up security when it's uh, approaching the electioneering period. And we want to ensure that, you know, the election will be peaceful. So my question is, how can we fail to provide security to those people in Baringo, to those people in areas that are deemed to be, you know, to be security host in security hot hotspots area, yet we want to deliver a peaceful election in those areas. So uh, if indeed... These 500 million will ensure that there is a peaceful uh, election period, then well and good. But also let them also look at the bigger picture for those people who are in insecure regions a- in Kenya. A- according to the report, mm-hmm. uh, it trades partly, and I quote, during the 2022 general election, the State Department for Interior will continue to provide security in the whole country and at the polling stations during the actual polling day. In the report, uh, 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 we have 16.9 billion shillings that will be used for general election activities. In addition, we have general election materials that will be allo- uh, allocated, while we uh, 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 will have a, um, a mass voter registration. But the issue of security still uh, um, has been given so much prominence if you look at the particular statement. Mm. And the government is really interested in this particular issue here, as even the, the Ukuri attorney who, who, uh, the, from the National Treasury said that he'll continue to monitor and address the challenges that may uh, disrupt the election by monitoring the, 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 the drug situation in some parts of the country and, of course, the threats to security, uh, among others, uh, that might threaten the economy. Uh, uh, do you agree with what he said, uh, Meshak, and your thoughts in regards to that particular issue? I, I want to challenge a certain thinking that he's brought on board mm-hmm. um, when he actually mentions that, you know, that the demand is our democracy has grown and that the demand is on the ground. So then the question would be, does a democracy grow just because a population has grown? What is act, what, what do we actually refer to as a democratic growth. Is how it, you, how, is it, is how would you it, tell is me? It, Do you feel it, like we are a democrat, democratic uh, country? And that is, where I'm, that is where I'm coming f- uh, That is where I'm coming to. Mm. Do our democracy grow just simply because our population multiplies everywhere? 
our democracy is tested on a number of things. And this year, our democracy is called to be tested on how we are able to conduct our elections. The body in charge of election is IEBC. So it is not the ground that is asking for 43 billion. It is the IBC that is asking for 43 billion. Now, if our elections are going to be credible, if the process is going to be verifiable, if the results are going to be the genuine result, then that is the genuine test of our democracy in this year. But there are a number of times that our democracy is tested. Our democracy is tested through the courts, where you have the chief justice as the president of the Supreme Court. Our democracy is tested through our you know, independent institutions. So we cannot just simply, in a very simplistic, literally, uh, literal way, say that our democracy is tested by the people on the ground. Our democracy is tested through the institutions, through the bodies that we have constituted constitutionally to help us you know, elevate our democracy. So I think I have I have I've made that clear. Mm. So, so, now, so, so you're saying that the issue of the 44 billion shilling, it is, uh, it is too much for us? I mean, it's and vague. it's not a reflection it's, it's, of it's, us being it, a democratic it, it, country. Yes, it's vague. Because I just gave an example and I said Canada mm. is no. the second largest country in the mm. world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just immediately after Russia. And their election costs are half of what Kenya is demanding. Now, what, what, is, what is Kenya actually worldwide, even in terms of positioning, even in Africa, why should we demand that kind of money? Has our democracy grown than Canada? In fact, has our democracy grown than the US? Right? So we really can't say that just because there, is a, there are a lot of voters that are going into this election this year, that our democracy has grown. That will just be like uh, false. Right? Now, on the issues of security, every electioneering year, and I repeat this, every electioneering, electioneering here, we have always wanted to focus so much on security, as if though we are predicting conflict, as if though we are already you know, interfering with the process. What the populists need is when they can go and vote in the morning till evening and their votes are counted and, and, and transmitted according to the constitutional remits and they are given results by evening. You don't need to beef up security everywhere. If, we, if IBC is demanding 43 billion, where is this other 500 million going to? I mean, these 43 billion should be, an inclu should be inclusive of the security. But why are we also just talking too much about security? Can we talk about the credibility of the election? Has IBC learned from 2017? Are we going into another sham and scam election? So there are a little bit more dynamics to looking at, you know, what this amount is going to do than security. Obviously, security is a very vital matter. But until that point, there are a lot of similar issues that we need to address. And I'll tell you some of those issues. The IBC that is going with us into this election is an IBC that was actually ordered by the Supreme Court to open the servers in 2017, and they didn't. So they are in contempt of the court. This IBC, I'm telling you, shouldn't even be running this election by now. And these are some of the things that we really need to have on a conversation table. You see, when you are in a studio like this, this is a sitting room for over 20,000 Kenyans, and they are listening to what we have to say. If you want to support beefing up of security with a body that bungled an election, and is in contempt of the court, has our democracy grown? All right, and then, then all right, and that's the question. Caleb, maybe uh, I'll give you time to respond to that. Okay, once more, thank you. I have had these complaints. I'll call, I'll, I'll call his statements, complaints and opinions. Because number one, he has talked about the CJ, the, De the Chief Justice. I don't know how the Chief Justice and democracy come into, into play. However, this is what I want to say. In this year, we have 48 people, 48 citizens, cleared by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. They have been cleared to run for the presidency. In comparison to 2017, I am not sure the uh, of the number of candidates, but I, I, I don't think they were above uh, 12 in number. I, am, I, am, I don't think so. And that is why I'm saying the, the more the democracy grows, the more it demands for financial, you know, 
pumping. So uh, again, my brother here said that uh, uh, we can use the skill available on ground. I am not of uh, I'm not objecting that fact, but the question is, are we suitable right now? Are we fit to take up the roles? Are we fit to use the the youths that you are talking about? to ensure that we you know we deliver a credible election number 1 i will say this this is kenya we live in kenya we are not in europe we are not in canada and issues that are affecting us right now are not the same issues that affect canada we are in africa and we must understand and also try you know to embrace how can we improve and how can we move from the past you know failures in as much as we want to achieve what other first first world countries have achieved